not exactly a morning person. All right, let me just see where we are. All right, the brachas, um, Baruch atah Adonai lehinu melech olam, Asher kirishan bemitzotav hatzivanu lesukva tivrei Torah, Barev na Adonai lehinu tivrei Torah tcha befinu pi abcha bet Yisrael, Beniye anachnu betzei etzinu betzei etzei abcha bet Yisrael, Kulani yodei shemecha, Amen. Amen. Okay, so we're doing a shear. Uh, uh, Kevin's cousin, Darren Hart, his wife, uh, Ayala, is having some tests. So obviously, we wish her a refuah shalom and hope the tests come out successful. The Hebrew name is Ayala Bluma Bar Chaya Sasha. Okay, so uh, Kevin, we're thinking of her. Yeah, may she always be recovering. Oh man, and successful results. I'm going to share my screen now, and I want you guys to read a Mishnah. Just hang on a second. All right. Now, uh, Arthur, Arthur um, I want you to read it, but just read it uh, carefully. Okay. The Mishnah now elaborates the case of tooth stated in the Mishnah of 15b. Regarding what is the tooth of the animal, of an animal muad, it is muad to eat what is appropriate for it. An animal is muad to eat fruits and vegetables. If an animal ate a garment or utensils, he, her owner, pays half the damage. When, uh, when are these things said? Where the animal eats these things on the damaged party's premises. But if she does so in the public domain, he, its owner, is not liable. However, if she benefited from the food, then she, therefore the owner, pays what she has benefited. Carry on. Continue. The Mishnah okay. elaborates. The Mishnah elaborates. What is the case in which she pays what she has benefited? Benefited. If she ate appropriate food from the middle of the street, she pays what she has benefited. What, uh, but if she ate from the sides of the street, she pays what she has damaged. Similarly, if she ate from the entrance of a store, she pays what she benefited. But if she ate from inside the store, she pays for what she has damaged. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, it makes sense. So we're going to share this. We're going to share the screen. Uh, again, and I'm going to go through it point by point. Kev, I'm hearing a lot of background noise on your side, which is cool. Um, okay, that's no problem. So I just don't know how to do it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease my volume on my side so that you can ask me any questions and then just put it up appropriately. Now, it's not, it's not going to bother me. It's absolutely fine. All right, so listen, this is the stage of the Gomorrah. What happens, we always have a Mishnah, and then we have a Gomorrah that expands on this, okay? So I'm going to add quite a bit of information to this, to what you're reading uh, together. So let's read on what we said. The Mishnah now elaborates the case of tooth stated in Mishnah 15b. Regarding what is the tooth of the animal Muad, it is Muad to eat what is appropriate for it, okay? An animal is muad to eat fruits and vegetables. Now, let's just unpack this particular statement that we've got here. The first thing I want to unpack about it is the fact that if you look at it, is we have to analyze on this particular mission of what's normal for an animal to eat. Okay, because the animal, what's normal, goes into three categories. Number one, what the animal generally eats. 
Number two, what an animal eats, what you call what you can call in a pinch. In other words, it's uh, it fulfills the animal, but it's not the animal's first dietary choice. However, it's beneficial to the animal. And the third thing is what it's not suitable for the animal to eat. Okay, those are the three things you've got to look at. Now, the, the other two factors you have to look at is where this is taking place with shame. Is it in the public domain or is it in the private domain in terms of appropriateness, right? So when we use the term, it is more to eat what is appropriate for it. Remember, we studied in the previous Mishnahs on 15b, what does that constitute? Do any of you guys remember? Guys? What does that constitute? Uh, yeah, what does it constitute that category? Is It's more to eat what is appropriate for it. What we learned before is we said, hang on a second. There are animals that are carnivoristic. They're carnivores. They're either wild animals or they're yeah, carnivores. Yeah. Somebody domesticated a dog, a cat, yeah. uh, which can be domesticated, but in essence, their diet is meat. So that's what we refer to what is eat what is appropriate for it. You're talking about normal food. versus abnormal uh, we're talking about uh, what is appropriate, two categories of carnivores. A wild animal, which you raise from young, mm. um, which is generally carnivorous in nature, or an animal which is known as a domesticated animal, which is also carnivorous yes. in nature. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we determine what is appropriate for it. It's different to an animal is more to eat fruit and vegetables. So that is your general herbivore animal, your your workhorse animal. Domesticated. Uh, even, even, yeah, domesticated, what, what we call even working animals. People didn't have animals as pets then. So what we call the donkey, the sheep, the cow, etc. Domesticated animals are generally herbivores, okay? If an animal ate a garment or utensil, he, the owner, pays half damage. Why would the owner pay half damage? Because it's inappropriate uh, for an animal to eat something well, that brings it no physical gratification. And mm. if it's not in the category of physical gratification, and it's unusual for an animal to eat a cutlery or crockery or clothing, it then makes it caring because it's unusualness and therefore you pay half damage, even in the public domain. When are these things said? When the animal eats these things on the damaged party's premises. So this is not a contradiction because uh, the rabbis say that for carrying damage, you still pay half damages on the damaged party's premises. It's only Rabbi Tauson that says you pay full damages for carrying time. Okay? Yeah. But if she does so in public domain, he the owner is not liable. So guys, I just want to explain to you what it refers to with this he and she quickly. Uh, this term he and she is interchanging. Generally, the term she is a female work animal, and the word he is the owner of that animal. That's how it refers to. Uh, okay. When when it does a translation, I would prefer the translation as the animal the owner. But I'm not writing this. So I'm just explaining to you. But uh, if the animal does so in public domain, the owner is not liable. Okay. So this is interesting. We're going to learn a case of what does it mean the owner is not liable in the public domain? Okay, because we understand the case of shame because you're only responsible in the damaged party's yard. But what about eating a garment or utensil that would fall under the category of carrying? Why do you not pay in the public domain? Are there extenuating circumstances? So we're gonna learn that. However, if she benefited from the food, then the animal's owner pays what she has benefited. Okay, so there are three categories there also of consumption. There's something known, guys, as damage. Kevin, are you still on the WhatsApp call? Kevin? Yeah, yeah it looks like he is. No, I need to check. Kev, can you hear me now? He's yeah, talking I away. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Marco, I, I can manage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, so Marco, there's, there's three different sorts of categories here. There's what you call damage, in other words, destruction. 
Mm. There's what you call ben benefited, and mm. there's what you call it obviously consumed. So we're going to uh, go through where the difference is and what you have to pay accordingly. Mm. Okay. And what it has to do with is what the animal usually eats compared to what the animal consumes. Did it benefit her from a physical gratification point of view in terms of taste or diet, or did it leave her obviously um, uh, not fulfilled at all and compared to the damage and where the damage takes place? Okay, I'm just touching on some of the issues. Uh, uh. Right. So the Gemara starts The rabbis taught in the Bryce that the tooth of an animal is more to eat what is appropriate for it. How so? If an animal entered the yard of a damaged party and ate foods that are appropriate for her to eat or drink, in other words, either beverages or food, uh, then the owner pays full damages. Okay, well, that's a clear case of shame. Damaged party's yard, ate or drink, uh, pays full damages. That's fine. And similarly, if a wild beast entered the yard of a damaged party and tore apart an animal and ate it, the owner is pays for damages. As we said in the beginning, it seemed to repeat the statement which we learned in the 15th death. An animal is more to eat what is appropriate for it, an animal is more to eat fruits and vegetables. And we made the distinction in 15b and said that, hang on a second, this refers to where an animal ate carnivorous foods versus a vegetarian animal. Okay, so it's not a repetition. Fine. Um, if, and similarly, if a, kite, uh, if a cow ate barley, a donkey ate fetch, or a dog lapped oil, or a hog ate a slice of meat, they, the owners, uh, pay full damages. Okay, so I'm just going to explain to you uh, what this means. Okay. Uh, so what we say is, there's a case where... Let me, just, let me just keep this rather simple. Okay. Let's just see if I can keep this rather simple. All right. Um, so what, what we're basically saying is here that when you have the last four cases, a cow, a donkey, a dog, and a hog, the animal has eaten something that it doesn't ordinarily eat, right? I will eat it out of necessity if it's hungry. But the Bryce is actually teaching us foods which an animal will eat in a pinch are deemed appropriate for it uh, because it's still pulling for the animal. Does that make sense? So in other words, it might not be a normal sort of uh, food. So why? A cow usually eats fetch. A donkey doesn't eat fetch. So why it's bringing these last four cases is it says if a dog or any other animal eats food that are not appropriate for it, but however it fed the animal and the animal is satiated, that uh, you have to pay the damages as far as that's concerned, even if it's not ideal food for the animal. Does that make sense? Yeah. Stop sharing the screen. Okay. So once we've got those cases, uh, I'm going to go through um, where it deals with these uh, issues. In the dust, Basically, on uh, Baba Kama 98, it discusses uh, food that is appropriate for each animal, like a cow eats fetch, a donkey eats barley, etc., etc. Okay, and you also find it repeated in the full at the end of 7 a.m. So, what happened is uh, we've discussing a case where uh, the animals had stores that were open. Let me just go through this. Where the animal eats these things in the damaged party's premises, that's clear. But if she does so in public domain, the owner is not liable. However, she benefited from the food, then the owner pays what she benefits. Okay. So uh, Arthur read the second part of the uh, Mishnah. Um, so it's going to go through different categories. If the animal ate appropriate food from the middle of the street, she pays what she has benefited. Guys, what do you think that means? Well, you're not talking about. Uh, well, you're saying. Okay, what you, I'm you, saying is. Are, are you making it? Are you making excuses to Shay now? Because normally you don't pay in the public domain, but now you're saying you do. Excellent. Okay. 
Excellent. Michael Hutonet. If you eat appropriate foods from the middle of the street, she pays what she benefited. And Mark was asking a good question. We ordinarily learn that you don't pay for shame in the public domain. So what's it talking about here that you seem to be paying? Does that, so, is that right? What she pays, what she benefited. Okay, so, so let's just discuss what this actually means. Okay, so the first thing that it means is that there's a different for what, even though you don't pay the full damages for shame, say the animal ate caviar, Mark, and it ate 3,000 rands worth of caviar, right? Oh, you don't yeah. pay for the 3,000 rands worth of caviar in the public domain because you're exempt for shame. But if she yeah. benefited from the food, what you pay for is the equivalent of what you would pay for for cheap food to have filled her for the next meal. Mm -hmm. So, but, but, but are we talking about shame now? Are we, are we still, yes, are we, we're talking okay. about shame. But, but, yeah. but, but obviously, you identify an owner in the public domain because you always said private and public are very interconnected and you can you identify, should, pro, you yeah, can you identify, identify a private owner. owner. I'm saying the guy. Right. And you're, saying uh, the, and you're saying the damage is limited to the to the to the um the damaging animal and therefore it's no okay okay so what i'm saying is as follows all right is that you've got different sorts of uh, of areas you've got the public domain where all the animals work walk okay once you've got the public domain where all the animals walk you've got private street vendors yes and then an animal is the entrance of the store that's a classic yes. case of shame it's yes. okay classic case but what an, what they would do is when they opened their stores the storekeepers would take down the roller shuttles right and they'd lay them in front yeah. of the store and they'd put all their yeah. food on top of there for the wares okay yes. so that technically is still within the public domain does that right. make sense fine yes. so it says as follows if she ate appropriate foods from the middle of the street she pays which uh she has benefited fine so okay. what what that means is that because it's a public area you thought we say we don't pay anything for shame yeah Okay, but what she has benefited means that if if uh, she ate three thousand rands worth of um, Arthur, if she ate three thousand rands worth of uh, um, caviar. caviar, right? But her next meal of uh, uh, grass or or cheap uh, um, hay mm. would have cost uh, uh, sixty rand. She only has to pay sixty rand to the owner. She has to pay 60 rand because the animal is full. Does that make sense? So it's it makes similar, sense. It's so it's sort of similar to the, I mean, it's like related to the concept of uh, when you, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking out of my head here, where if, if, the, if the animal's good, you pay half the body of the, the value. So you're paying up to a reasonable amount, basically. Of what the animal would have, no, or half the it wouldn't be the same thing because no, I'm talking similar, I'm talking like it's related, it's not like you're paying for the caviar, you're paying for the value of what the animal would eat, like okay. But yeah, I, I get what you're saying, but that doesn't quite make sense because in other cases, you don't pay anything. So, Marco, let me read the Mishnah okay. because it does make sense when you've got it in front of you. Okay, can you see my screen? Yeah, let me see, fine. So yeah. I, want to sh I want to direct you guys to the bottom where it says the Mishnah elaborates. Okay. Okay. You'll notice there's three words here. What is the case in which she pays what she has benefited? If she ate appropriate foods from the middle of the speech, she pays what she benefited. Okay. So yes. what that actually means is it's a standard case of shame in the public domain, which she does not pay actual damages. In other words, if she had 3,000 rands worth of caviar, she doesn't pay the owner uh, back the 3,000 rands worth of caviar, even though it's not a private school, it's in the public domain. Okay? Yeah. Because he should have been more aware and not left mm. things in the public domain. 
what yeah. the owner of the animal is entitled to pay uh, the caviar owner for is the fact that her next meal has been taken care of. Right. Which is a different right. issue. Fine. Yes. But if she ate from the sides of the street, she pays what she has damaged. Now, what is the difference there if pays what she has damaged? What we're saying here is this is the case of Karen. The Gomorrah seems to separate a case of where the animal ate. Yeah. So why, why it's a case of Karen is that it wasn't negligence to leave it on the side of the street. And it's unusual damage. An animal doesn't, you see, picture this, the animal's walking in the street. If you leave something in the middle of the street, then whose fault is that? If I leave, uh, uh, if I leave a cell phone on Louis Boerter Avenue yeah. and cause a driving past, whose fault is that? Yours, yeah. Mine, fine. Because that's the common walkway. On the side of the street, if a car goes up the embankment and hits my cell phone, whose fault is that? Their fault. It's their fault. They shouldn't be there. So that's when it becomes a case of carrying. So when you read she pays what she has damaged, it's carrying time for the first three offenses or it's carrying more out of the animals uh, deemed to be a ha habitual damager. Yeah. So when you read the word she pays what she has damaged, the Mishnah is discerning there a case of carrying damage. Whereas in the middle of the street, she pays what she's benefited. You still, Michael, exempt for a case of shame, but you do yeah. pay uh, you do pay uh, back what the animal's next equivalent meal back, which is a pittance of what food she actually consumed in value. Right. The price of human-based food or expensive food is far supersedes that of a cheap meal for an animal of a bit of straw. Okay? And we're going to go and see later on in the Mishnah, in the next Mishnah, uh, what different foods they are for an animal and what is that value of that food. Does it make sense yeah. so far? Yeah. 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 Fine. Similarly, if she ate from the entrance of the store, she pays what she has benefited. There, uh, it's discerning something uh, of a similar nature. And what it's saying is there is that uh, to, a, to, a, to a certain extent, um, it's, it's, still, it's still deemed, there's a bit of an argument as to whether or not that's considered the damaged party's yard or not, we're going to see at the entrance of the store. We're going to see. But what we can see clearly is if she ate from inside of the store, she pays what she's damaged. Now, that is yeah. not a case believe it or not, of caring. Because mm -hmm. now you've entered the private domain and there you're fully responsible for shame damage. Now, Mark, uh, I can understand why or you or Arthur or Kevin would be a little bit confused here because it's using the word damage for different things here. Mm -hmm. It's using the word damage on the top from the side of the street uh, to talk about caring. And at the bottom, when she's inside the store, it's using damage which would imply caring. But in actual fact, yeah, 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 it's, it's not caring, it's shame. Yeah. So that doesn't, that's not helpful. Does well, that make the, sense? The, the, only, the only way to look at it is that she, if the animal is hell of a hungry, she's going to go right into that store and chow. And that yeah. would be shame. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly it. So, so, um, so that's a classic case of shame. So uh, what we've learned here is even within the public domain, there's slightly different sections of liability and what you pay for. We also learn that there's a difference between an animal eating that which uh, it's not ideal, but it still fulfills the animal versus something completely abnormal that doesn't uh, give any nutritional value to the animal. And then that would be laid down as destructive. Okay, that would be laid down as absolutely destructive. Right, I'm just going to go forward into a different arena now. Okay, who's in the waiting room now? Uh, it's Stephen. Stephen. How's it, Steve? 
Hey, damn, you're right. Eh? All right, a new shame, but sorry, we started at eight o'clock, the 10 minutes left. Um, and we just started a mission. It's a pity you didn't join us. Uh, but yes, I'm a little short today, I was a bit later today. So I was slept. No, it's not a problem, just continue. Oh, the earlier yeah. meaning that I can make it. Okay, it's not a problem, just continue and enjoy. You must let me know when you want me to uh, catch you up. Okay, up, yeah, maybe this evening or we'll talk later on here. Huh? Yeah, that's not a problem. All right, so the Gomorrah derives a ruling from this Brysa. Uh, Rav Papa said, if you say in the Brysa, if an animal eats any food that is not her regular fare, but she will normally eat it out of necessity, then this is called eating rather than destruction. So, if, for example, if a cat eats dates, a donkey eats fish, the animal's owner pays full damages because even though it's not its normal food, it's considered shame because the animal gets physical gratification and the animal physically benefits from a nutritional point of view. And the Kimura actually records a case. There was a donkey that ate bread and chewed the bread basket. Rav Yehuda obligates him, the donkey's owner, to pay full damages for the bread and half damages for the basket. Okay? So the Gemara questions this ruling. Why does he only pay half damages for the basket? Since it's normal for the donkey to eat the bread, it's all also normal for the donkey to eat the basket. And the reason, together with the bread. Why? Because the, if, if the donkey is ravenous and trying to get to the bread, it's going to half break the basket and consume that with part of um, uh, the bread. So I'll give you an example. It's often happened to me that I've had a hot dog and I've had a serviette it, and I ravenously ate the hot dog and uh, a little bit of the serviette was missing. It's <laughs> <laughs> good. I'm a donkey here. Donkey so dog. the owner should pay full damages for the basket as well. The Kimura says, no, this is a case where it ate the bread first and then only chewed the basket. Um, but is eating bread normal for a donkey? So why contrast this with the Brysa that states otherwise? In other words, if an animal ate bread or meat or cooked food, the animal's owner pays half the damage. Is this not referring to a domestic animal such as a donkey or a cow? The Gomorrah answers, no, it refers to a wild beast. So what's going on here? What it's saying is here is that basically uh, if an animal eats a, a food that's not necessarily of normal fare, like bread, then it still uh, would fall under, um, what do you call it, under shame. But if it's food that would be con uh, constitute a completely unusual sort of uh, food where the animal would never eat it, even if the animal was starving, that would constitute caring. So we're saying that if the animal ate the basket separately, in other words, not to get to the food, then that would be case of caring where you pay half damages for the basket. And then it talks about a deer which is herbivorous, doesn't normally eat meat. So because it's, and it talks about wild animals and undomesticated animals. And it doesn't normally eat bread uh, either. So therefore, if it's hungry, uh, we, we're going to look at an unusual case. So let me, uh, let me give you to you like this. It says, if an animal ate bread or meat or a cooked food, the animal's owner pays half the damage. What's it talking about here? Is this not referring to a domestic animal such as a cow donkey? No, it refers to a wild beast. Because it says in the case of a wild beast, eating meat is normal for it. How then could the Brysa be speaking about a wild beast if it rules that the owner paid only half damages? In other words, it's caring. It says that uh, basically when it refers to where the meat is roasted and it's unusual for a wild beast to eat roasted meat. Alternatively, you could refer to a wild animal as a deer because a deer is herbivorous. It's not carnivorous. And therefore it would not actually eat uh, any sort of meat so whatsoever. So it says you've got to distinguish what sort of animals eating the food. If it's a wild animal, it wouldn't even eat meat if it's, uh, if it's roasted. It generally loves to tear and eat raw meat. And if it's a wild animal, but uh, herbivore, it's not going to touch meat any case. In that case, even if the animal would nutritionally benefit, you pay carrying half damages because it's unusual both in the public domain and in the private domain. 
An issue is referred to say, in fact, that the Bryce refers to a domesticated animal, as you thought initially, but it refers to when bread was on the table. We are on 20A1. Okay. So basically, I think, let me just see our time allocation. We've got six minutes left. We're going to just uh, continue a second. We are on 2801. Another incident. There was a goat that saw a turnip on top of the barrel. It pulled its way up and climbed up to the top of the barrel. And it ate the turnip and broke the barrel. So Rava obligated the goat's owner full damages for the turnip and the barrel. So guys, why do you think that you have to pay uh, full damages for the barrel? Egregious, no, no. Um, who's that mean? Um, for the barrel, um, uh, well, connected, um, no, well, are you talking about Muad here? Are you just talking about a case of Muad for Karen or all right? No. It's a straightforward yeah, case. The goat climbs, uh, mm. uh, climbs up to get a turnip on top of a barrel and it poured and climbed its way up and it ate the turnip and the barrel broke. So rubber obligates the goat's owner full damages uh, for the turnip and the barrel. It sounds like Sympathus for Taurus. <laughs> oh, very. No, barrel broken. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It sounds like it's, 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 it's yeah, are we one of those now where it's connected, but it's... Disconnected. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh, it's guys, it's, it's actually very straightforward. It's a case of oh, okay. shape, regal, mix. Why? Mm -hmm. A regal, of course, regal. Yeah, that's right. The Shame animal climbs yeah. in the barrel with its weight, broke yeah. the barrel, and it's yeah. not considered <laughs> very unusual because the whole reason the animal yeah. climbed up the barrel was to eat the turnip. Okay. So mm -hmm. since it's normal for the goat to eat the turnip, it's also normal for it to pull its way up and climb up yeah. to the top of the barrel in order to eat the turnip. Yeah. Okay. So another ruling. Ilfa said if an animal was in the public domain, and she stretched out her neck and ate from food that was at the back of her fellow animal. She, um, her owner is uh, liable to pay. What's the reason for this? In other words, the back of her fellow, um, we're talking about the public domain. Animal A and this animal B. Michael, I have my animal and Kevin is in front of me. And my animal starts eating from Kevin's animal's backpack where there's food in it now that backpack of kevin's animal the reason there's food in it is to feed kevin's animal yeah so why does kevin you or arthur think that you should pay for that in the public domain in the public domain yeah maybe yeah kev i can hear you kev Perfect. That's exactly that? perfect answer. Perfect, perfect answer. If it's on Kevin's animal, I've got no business uh, interfering or foraging. Imagine if you had a car and you were parked yeah. in Louis Boiter Avenue, Michael, and yeah. suddenly yeah. I open your car door and look in your back seat and try and hop something. It yeah. might be in the public domain. That is your, whatever the contents are of your car, that belongs to you in a private capacity. Exactly as Kevin said, is that whatever's on that animal is considered the private property of that individual. Oh, no. Even oh, in the domain. Oh, okay. Therefore, it's a case of uh, liability uh, for shame so. on a yeah. private domain because basically the back of a fellow animal is legally like the yard of the damaged party. Good answer. Yeah, yeah uh, Kevin, yeah. that is dead on perfect. <laughs> So, uh, the Gomorrah considers whether Bryce supports Ilfa in this matter. Shall we say that the following Bryce supports him? If one's basket was slung over his shoulder and hanging behind him, and an animal stretched out her neck and ate from the basket, the animal's owner is liable to pay for the foods that she has eaten. So, the Gomorrah rejects the second proof, because just as Rubber said elsewhere, where she jumps here to 
the Brasa might refer to where she jumps to eat the food. So what, what I'm saying is in Kevin's case, it's different. It's a case where you're entering the private domain like I'm coming into your car. In the secondary yeah. case, it's unusual yeah. for an animal to uh, actively go after another animal's food. It's one thing if two animals are in the public walkway, animal smells food, and it eats it and it starts to chop. It's a different thing when an animal does acrobatics and does what is considered very unusual to get to the food. And therefore, it's a case of uh, half damages because of the unusualness in the public domain. Does, does that time. make sense? Because the animal um, uh, rests uh, on the back of another animal and eats the load from a prone position. So we're saying it's one thing if an animal stretches out and eats. It's another thing if it climbs on the other animal, which is carrying damage. Mm -hmm. So if it's a usual way that an animal will forage, uh, you've absolutely entered the private domain the minute you start foraging in another person animal's backpack. It's like me going to Kevin's car. All right, guys, mm. we've finished on this note. I hope you have a good day. Thank, thank you, guys. Thanks for joining nice. us. And nice I wish you